My guest at this time, you may have seen in WCW, WWE, AEW. You might have seen some of his work uh, influenced over on Glow or Young Rock. It's our good friend, Shavo Guerrero. Shavo, welcome back to Wrestling Inc. Daily. Thanks, Nick, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah, so you are uh, so busy doing so many things. Uh, I got a lot of stuff I want to ask you about, but I'll start with the thing that all the sheets picked up on here this past week, which was, yeah, that some fan pointed out you were no longer on the AEW roster page, and it sounds like it was news to you based off of the tweet you put out. What happened here? A hundred percent news to me, man. Uh, so originally when I started AEW talking to, um, to, uh, Tony Khan, he was like, um, all right. So you started working for about, uh, maybe it was about two months. Then, um, I got the opportunity, you know, I knew I was going back to young rock. I just didn't know when it was going to happen. So when I talked to, um, to, uh, Tony about it, I told him, Hey, um, you know, they just called me. I'm going back to, to Young Rock. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? And he's like, Oh, I think it's a great opportunity, man. I, he goes, I mean, we're on a roll with you, with, with you and Andrade. So, but uh, it's a great opportunity. And I think you should go and do that. And then you'll have a job and come back. I said, Great, awesome. Originally, I was supposed to go for three months. And when I was there at Christmas time, Young Rock or The Rock <laughs> basically asked, said, uh, Hey, uh, <clears throat> you know, his people were like, um, there's a lot of wrestling on the back end. Um, you know, we, we really need you to, to stay. We're asking if you can stay. So I kicked that around with my wife back and forth and uh, we decided, yeah, it's probably a great, great opportunity. So um, I decided to stay. And then uh, coming back in early February, started giving Tony some texts, no answer, no reply, no reply. Uh, called him, left him voice message, no reply whatsoever. And I'm like, Hmm, Okay. And then all of a sudden I see that I'm not even uh, a part of the page anymore of the AEW roster. So it's kind of, uh, kind of pisses me off to be honest. I mean, Hey, I'm a big boy. And if there's not plans for me, totally fine. I get it, but answer your phone. I deal with billionaires all the time and it's not, she's not the first one. So it kind of pisses me off a little bit after working for Vince McMahon, after working with Vince McMahon, you're not, you can deal with anybody, you know? So I'm like, answer your phone. Okay. This is this, this is not cool. So that's where we're at. So wait, are you under contract with AEW right now or no? No, I, I signed like a, I believe like a three month deal, you know, like their first, it was their, you know, your, your introductory deal. And then we were going to revisit that when, uh, you know, that, that came up. Of course, I went to Australia and started filming Young Rock and that's, uh, that's where we're at. So what, were, so it sounds like before all of this, like, where, was Tony cool to work with? Like, what was your 100%. Relationship? 100%. Yeah. Everything was great. No problem whatsoever. I even got it from Tony, like, hey, go film that. Don't worry, you have a job when you come back. I even had some texts when I was in in Australia, back and forth. He and I talking about some plans, about doing some stuff. Really? This just... Ghost. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like, okay, I get, I get it. You got a lot on your pot on your, on your plate. Great. But he was the only one I was dealing with. It wasn't like I was dealing with, you know, a talent relations guy or whatever in, you know, in WWE, I would have been dealing with, I guess it's John Laurinaitis right now and not directly with Vince. Um, but hmm. I was dealing directly with Tony. I mean, I don't even have anybody else's number there. <laughs> it's just Tony's. So if he's going to, uh, you know, ghost me, it kind of it upsets me a little bit. So, I mean, is this, is this kind of a sign that you, you feel your, your, your time with AEW is done? I mean, are you looking to, to maybe go back if you want to continue your legacy with, with WWE? Like, how, what's your vibe right now, I guess, on the situation? Great question, man. You know, I'm always, I keep it open. I've, I've been the one who, to close some, um, you know, some, close some doors before with that uh, Guerrero uh, attitude, the Guerrero uh rebelism if you want to call it that i we all inherited from my dad chavo senior you know <laughs> but um you know i've kind of learned from that and have just look i'm just keeping everything open and it's totally fine and i'm open to work with aew I'm open to work with wwe you know whatever it's great it it's you know i'm still you know the the hollywood the wrestling guy in hollywood so i've got other projects coming on there and it, it's only beneficial to whatever company I end up at because the projects that I'm working on are usually all wrestling projects. So I, I have the ability to get 
when they start casting, get whatever organization I'm working for, get their guys looked at. It's that it's, it's a no brainer. So in fact, I mean, we, I don't want to say who it is. Cause I don't think I can even talk about it yet, but for young rock season two, uh, I was helped cast a guy from AEW on it. I won't say a name yet, but and he played a great part. He was awesome, but that was a great working relationship because I was like, Oh, AEW perfect. It works great. So wait, was there ever any, t- was there ever any talk of you formally working uh, with AW like backstage as well? I mean, like again, with your connections in your mind, I could see you helping them produce in, in a lot of different ways. Yes, there was some talk all over. I mean, in fact, C- Cody, when Cody was there, he was uh, of course like, um, "Hey, man, are you going to be helping out with matches and stuff?" I said, "Absolutely, man. Whatever you guys need." He's like, "Oh, great, man. We'd love to hear your wisdom back here." And and that's straight from Cody's mouth. Now I know Cody's not there anymore, which is crazy to me but yeah. uh right right but um yeah so there was absolutely talk with it you know and i was already you know i have all a lot of wrestlers that are there that are individually coming up to me and saying hey man would you mind watching my match would you mind critiquing yeah sure no problem because the thing that i see at aew is that you know the in wwe the producers the you know the agents producers really got involved in your matches in AEW. They kind of let you do your own thing. So it's almost like, it's almost like we need a happy medium, you know, in WWE, they, they micromanage you there at times. And then in AEW, they didn't do enough. I felt, I felt like they really need to help a lot of the young guys really just put their matches, just get, just put things in the right spots. And these guys are such talented wrestlers and such talented athletes. But sometimes um, it's spot fest. You've seen it. It's you know doing spots and spots just to do a spot. When you know just because you can do a backflip doesn't mean that you should do a backflip. Sure. So you know we've seen it, and um, I just I think that you know people they need help in that. Same as I needed help when I first started. When I first started and my first five years in, I always had guys like you know Fit Finley and you know of course Eddie and Benoit and and uh, Malenko and I mean, Kurt Henning, Steve Regal, like a name, Arn Anderson, they're always coming up to me and say, hey, man, try this, you know, slow down, try taking this out, try adding this. And it's just infinite, infinite wisdom that I had growing up. I mean, some of the best ever to work were my mentors, you know. So, yeah. and I would say nothing to the young guys at all. They just, it's just, they'll see it in five years and they go, oh, man, what were we doing? You know, what? <laughs> And, and it's interesting, you know, it's interesting because like you've worked for Tony, you've worked for Vince, but you also worked for Bishop, right? And Absolutely. I think a, a lot of people see kind of Tony and Bishop in this kind of similar category, probably because they have that kind of same tenacity and, you know, wanting to kind of put the, 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 the you know, gloves on to, to box a bit. Um, do you see Tony and Eric as similar cuts of people? Are they different to you? Like, how is it working for them differently? Very different to me very different to me i'm still in touch with eric a lot and actually we have another project i think we're working on here coming up soon but um um different definitely different for sure um tony's definitely his own boss it's it's all three of those guys if you go from from uh bischoff to vince to to tony all three very powerful guys very very smart wrestling guys um just they just have different ways of going about it yeah, for sure. Are you surprised to see the budding heads publicly like they have? I mean, it seemed like it was uh, the honeymoon period it ended pretty quickly with those two, I guess. I don't know. You know, that's the wrestling business, you know. Um, Eric has his way of doing things and, um, you know, he's outspoken. He doesn't <laughs> he doesn't pull punches. And I think when you're at that, that level, um, you're not going to pull a lot of punches. But at the same time, you're, you're going to be respected, you know. You may not be liked, you may not be, they may not agree with you, but they're going to respect you. Um, it's just like you see Eric Skull goes back to WWE every now and then, you know, and next you know, he's, he was the head of their, what was it, head of Raw or head of SmackDown, whatever he was. Yeah, it was then, like a couple of years wasn't. back. He's, I'd yeah. take a cup of coffee and creative running, running SmackDown for a couple of weeks, sure. Yeah, yeah. so you, I mean, you, you got some, you know, people, you get respect in there because he's been places. And if you listen to Eric yeah. talk, during his podcast, man, the guy is so knowledgeable about the way analytics work and working with networks and stuff. And he's, it's pretty, pretty cool to hear. 
Yeah, for sure. Um, and you know, with AEW, you know, again, like you've seen so many different rosters and stuff. Like an observation a lot of fans or insiders even seem to make is like the AEW roster is pretty flush right now. And it seems like there's going to be some turnover here. I mean, we already saw Cody exit, but some other players that started on early may be finding work elsewhere soon. What was your vibe of the locker room? Did it did it seem overcrowded? Like what what did what would you feel? Uh, I felt a little WCW-esque, a lot of wrestlers there, but they have a lot of shows. They have, you know, a lot of content to fill, you know, and then they added that the third show, you know, so, um, you know, they have their dark show, they have the rampage, they have, you know, all the other guys, I can't even name, there's a bunch of them. So there's, there's definitely um, spots for a lot of the guys, for sure. I felt that okay. there were a lot of people there, but, you know, hey, that's. I didn't even want to analyze that. That was not even above my, I was above my pay grade. I did not even want to get there. And it's like, you know, um, <laughs> that's, that's Tony, dude. you know, he's a money guy. So. Sure. All right. Well, what about Cody? You mentioned you, you talked to Cody. How was Cody to work with backstage? You know, Cody's, Cody's great. I get along with Cody really well. I always have, um, you know, um, I gave him a little advice early on when he was deciding to leave WWE before, um, which, you know, he's, he's a great guy. I love Cody, you know, we're wrestling family guys and he's always been really, really cool. So, um, he, you know, he, I saw him at the monitor a lot. I saw him on headphones a lot, you know, so, um, it was, you know, I think he was very involved. How much do you, how much of a help do you think he was to Tony Khan? I mean, again, Tony's, you know, got this multi-million dollar operation, but he's only been in a position to be a promoter realistically about three years. Right. Correct. I think a lot of help. You know, I mean, I wasn't in the office with those guys and not, I chose not to be, or well, first of all, wasn't invited, but also chose not to be, but, um, uh, yeah, man, I, I, Cody's got a, you know, he's, he's done a lot in this, I still say young career because he's younger than I am, but he's, he's done a lot and he's real knowledge, really knowledgeable. And, and last time everybody saw you, obviously you're alongside Andrade. Uh, right. how, how, uh, creatively, like, did you feel like you could come w uh, with ideas and be, you were heard and things like that? Absolutely. That's one thing was cool about AEW is that they kind of just give you a direction and let you do what you want to do. So, um, we were definitely involved in everything with that, you know, and talking to Andrade and I wouldn't help him with his matches, you know, because that was him, but I was uh, definitely in promos or backstage stuff and say, Hey man, try this, you know, don't do that. Let's, let's go this route. And, you know, he was great to work with. Yeah, for sure, man. It's, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, what do you think about the fact that WWE wasn't, isn't able to take guys like an Andrade or a Keith Lee or a killer cross, like so many names that fans seem to really love and they just didn't manifest over in WWE. What do you think is the, the, the issue there right now? WWE is just a different animal, man. And sometimes you hit and sometimes you don't sometimes, you know, Vince wants to put the machine behind you and sometimes he doesn't. It just, you know, who, who knows? Um, even when we were there, we'd say like, you know, they would let go of these um, guys that I saw money in and then keep guys that I sometimes saw that it was more of a stretch, you know? So you're kind of like, well, why that doesn't really make sense. Why do they do this? You know? So who knows? That just, it, it is what it is. That's just the wrestling business. And, and if I own my own company, I'd probably know more. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Well, hey, the big news with Vince right now, and I mean, I was just watching him on Pat McAfee before we chimed oh, in cool. here, is he might be wrestling again. What do you think of Vince Ooh. possibly stepping into a ring to do a match with Pat McAfee uh, if it comes to that? Wow. Um, you know, it's a, that's tough. That's a young man's sport, man. And and Vince <laughs> has, uh, I think he has about 30 years on me. So, uh, man, more, you know, he's an animal. Vince is an animal. So um, to see him get in there again, I'd, I'd, I'd watch it. Yeah, what about Steve Austin? It sounds like he might be coming back too. Steve is in awesome shape. Every time I see Steve, he looks great. He's training hard. He looks amazing. He doesn't look like he's really missed a beat, you know. Of course, he's got yeah. a broken neck, you know. Broken neck will slow you down, but um, he's smart enough to work around it. Hopefully, he gets an opponent that can work around that also. But um, that'd be cool. I mean, every time you hear that broken glass, you know, hit, then whoosh, the place goes nuts. Have you guys had a chance to exchange IPAs yet? Have you had the broken skull, Los Guerreros uh, night at the campfire? Absolutely. So, um, first time on this podcast, we were drinking his his IPA, his uh, um, was a uh, broken skull broken ranch. Skull. 
mm-hmm. and then a uh, broken school IPA. And then uh, the second time we're on, I brought my Los Guerreros over and we drank a bunch of those. <laughs> I cannot stress enough how much I like your Los Guerreros Mexican style lager. It's very, very good. I can't get it here in Chicago easily, unfortunately, but you, you were nice enough to send me some. And I sat on my roof drinking that and felt like a free man. It was wonderful. It's good, isn't it? Like we actually, um, we made some deals with some East Coast, Midwest and East Coast places to be able to, um, because, you know, alcohol laws, is that's that's the problem is shipping across state lines. And that's tough. Unless you're like, you know, Anheuser-Busch, it's it's tough to get a lot of beers um, over state lines. You know, some states are easier and some states are harder. So um, we made some deals with um, the Alasa Brewing Company, the the company that brews my... um, Los Guerreros. Um, we had some deals with other um, dist- other breweries, and they're going to brew. You know, we have signed a non-disclosure, of course, for the recipe, but they're going to brew um, Los Guerreros in those states, so that it's re- easily shipped. Hey, wait, is that Illinois too? Am I going to be able to get it in Chicago soon? Or no? I'm not sure. That's a great question. I'll find out for you though, and I'll text you on that. I- and let you know. I, if it is, I know all of the bodega owners in my area. I'll tell them oh, to cool. put in orders for it. Absolutely. Always, I drink so much. I'm such a snob. You know that? Like the yeah. fact that my local liquor store, people are like, well, Nick, what do you want? You know, <laughs> they just order. They know I'll buy it. Um, so anyway, uh, Young Rock season one um, was incredible. I watched every episode. I think everybody found it very, very interesting. It was funny because I was writing about Young Rock in my questions here as I was watching the McAfee. And then Pat McAfee asked Vince if he had seen the guy who played him on Young Rock. I hate to break this to you. Vince has not seen that yet. He he acted <laughs> like he did not even know what the show was. It was very sad. So Very possible. But you know what? He's got to know what it is because we have a direct working relationship with WWE. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, he, you know, he you know so it. yeah, he may, you know, he's, he's a billionaire. He's probably not going to be watching TV. Uh, but, uh, the guy who plays um, this man is Adam Ray, and Adam Ray is a, a stand-up, great stand-up comedian, a great actor, a great voiceover artist. He's really, really good, um, and and kind of you know he's a great impressionist, and he got Vince down pretty well. Yeah, I really liked his Vince impression. The the question I had though was so the whole premise of ep- the first season, and I'm guessing mm-hmm. is going to roll into season two, is The Rock running for president of the United States of America. Uh, is this like a just a premise or is do you think Dwayne actually setting the tone, maybe putting scenes out there for an eventual actual political run? What's, what do you think about that? Well, if I was going to run for president uh, and I had the avenue to make my own show about me possibly running for president, <laughs> that's a great that's a great way to do it. Uh, you know what? That's that's who knows. I don't even think he's really thinking that far ahead, but. You know, he'd probably in the back of his mind, and you know, who would I'd vote the Rock? He'd be great. I'd love to see him debate. <laughs> it'd be amazing. Oh, it'd be am- yeah. Well, I think that like you look at polls, it's like sixty percent of the country want Dwayne to be the president of the United States. So, right, absolutely. What about the XFL? Are, I know you're working with him on Young Rock. Do you have any? Uh, is there a department or a space there for you to do anything with him over in the XFL land? Well, I am working with Seven Bucks Production, his production company, on a different project that we partner up on. Um, hopefully that gets off the ground here pretty soon, but we just sold that show. So, um, cool. yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm his boy. So whatever he needs, if he needs me to work with the XFL, I'll be open with XFL. If he needs me to work on young rock, I'm there. If he wants to drink Zoa, I'm his guy. So, <laughs> all right. Um, well, uh, you know, obviously with you, it sounds like not technically tied to AEW or anything. A lot of fans would like to know if you talked to WWE about doing anything, is there any potential projects with them or crossover coming up i haven't yet actually this is so it's news to me with aw and then now being back in the states i was in australia for five months filming young rock season two so just getting back here right now so i kind of haven't really talked to anybody i've kind of you know i've only been home i don't know it's been two weeks yet so i I need a little time to decompress but uh you know hey man i'm open i'm open for sure i I like i like what's going on with wwe i like what's you know wrestling wrestling in general I'm always a wrestling fan. Sometimes you have to tune out. You have to stop watching for a little bit and then go back to watching it again. You think, oh, man, I didn't miss this. You know, I do miss the uh, I just, you know, I miss a product. I missed seeing the uh, just the guys getting and just the whole production of 
you know, of, of wrestling, you know, just it's such, it's like, it's amazing to see those wheels in motion really work. And then in WrestleMania, I mean, come on, there's, I don't think there's any show bigger, better than that. Yeah, no, and a huge main event this year at Brock Roman. I personally, I'm on the hook for Johnny Knoxville versus Sami Zayn. I <sighs> like the, I like the Andy Kaufman versus Andy Kaufman energy going on there. It makes right, me very right. Different. So anyway. Yeah, man. Very cool. You know, I'm, I'm excited to watch it for sure. Um, hopefully it, it's one of those that in, in WWE and WrestleMania, you know, sometimes you're handcuffed a little bit, you know, somebody, everybody wants to give that performance of their life, their lifetime performance, but sometimes you're handcuffed and you're okay. You got, you know, eight minutes, you got six minutes, you got 10 minutes. Um, and everybody thinks that that's when, you know, that's the end of the year, basically. So your stories culminate there. And then the next day you start again, but it's not always true. Sometimes those stories continue afterwards. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I was going to ask you, by the way, when we started the interview, you were playing golf yesterday, right? And yes. That, yeah. You me. Uh, were you playing were golf you, yesterday and the day before? <laughs> were, were you playing golf as Chavo Guerrero or as Kerwin White? Who, who well, it's it's uh, uh, Chavo Guerrero, aka Kerwin White. <laughs> I didn't know if when you hit the links, that was the resurrection. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> just such a dumb joke. I felt like I had the whole time I was texting with you. I was like, ah, you got to make. When are you gonna make that Kerwin White joke? What, yeah, hold on, I, I think I That's dropped funny. it at the wrong time. Anyway, Chavo, I always enjoy chatting with you, man. I'm so happy to hear you're back in the states and, and get things going again in pro wrestling. Um, anything you want to put over here before we wrap up the conversation today? You know, just go check me out on Instagram, uh, Chavo Guerrero Jr. Uh, that's always where you see most of my stuff, and I kind of link everything to that. Um, you'll see the pictures of my Los Guerreros Mexican Lager. You'll see Young Rock uh, Season 2 uh, news, and you'll see a whole bunch of stuff. Me playing golf <laughs> and my wrestling stuff. So that's where, kind of where it all happens right there, brother. Hey, Nick, I appreciate you. You've always been really good to me and always have uh, – uh, give me a platform to speak, man. I really appreciate that, man. You're a good guy. Thank you, Shavo.